In the last video, we looked at a structured relational database and how um, there's a part of the data of a database that's the entities or the table and the different attributes of the entity or the columns. In this video, we're going to abstract ourselves a little bit and try to ask the question, who decides what the attributes are and what are the consequences of those decisions? We're going to talk about ontologies. So we looked at a relational database, and this week we're also going to be working with other types of structures to um, uh, to compilate knowledge and then have it accessible to our computer systems. We're going to look at knowledge bases, which are, for example, uh, they're, they're similar to relational databases. As you can see, they have entities. So for example, you could describe a person. The person has attributes, so this one refers to the wrapper Little Nas X, who has a name, a description, a URL, and a detailed description, which has sub-attributes, URL, the Wikipedia page, and article body. So this is part of your exercise for this week. This is a part, this is a Google API called the Knowledge Graph, which uh, compilates information from the internet about people, about places, about all these things that uh, Google needs in the background for its searches. And it has about 17 billion facts about the world. So you're going to be playing around with that uh, structure. So there's these kinds of bases, knowledge bases. Later in the class, we're also uh, going to build something called knowledge graphs, which is where we extract information directly from the text. So if we find a sentence like Lil Nas X is an American rapper, we're going to build a kind of logical rule that says that um, there is a property is an, which has two arguments, little nas x and American rapper. So this person is this characteristic, and the characteristic is whatever verb we saw in the sentence. So either way, these are composed of some description of the world and some attributes about the world. In the case of the knowledge graphs, these are going to be dictated by our text. But in the case of a knowledge base, these attributes have to be planned ahead of time. And this is also true for databases. And of course, we need to think of how are we going to structure our information? What are the questions that actually matter to describe a person or to describe a place? We call this ontology. This is a branch of philosophy. You might have heard of epistemology, for example, which is how we know that things are real and what kind of evidence do we admit before we concede that something is either real or not. For example, dreams are not a source of truth in uh, some scientific traditions, but they are in indigenous scientific traditions. There's also the branch of axiology, for example, which is how do we decide that something is beautiful or valuable or worthy of our time? So why do we think that some opera is worthy, but some um, popular song is not as worthy of our time? Who, and who makes those decisions and how do they make them? But here we're going to focus on ontology, which is how do we structure the world and what kind of categories do we use to explain the world? For example, take a quick uh, pause the video after you've heard this question. Go take a look at your wallet or wherever you have a document that identifies you. What is in that document? Um, pause the video. Welcome back. What did you find? Probably someone made the decision that, that something that defines you is your name, something that defines you is an address. Very confusingly for me in the States, um, IDs have information about your weight, for example, um, about the, the color of your eyes and so forth. So all of these decisions were made explicitly by someone who decided that that is the appropriate way to describe a person. But of course, those decisions are always complicated and political, and we really need to think about how we are describing reality, because this is going to shape the kinds of questions and answers that we can offer our users. Um, one important example is, of course, um, sex slash gender in IDs, which is, in um, as you can see, in many um, 
contemporary, for example, census questions, it's actually not a binary anymore. So this is a census from Scotland, which has options for female, male, other. And of course it asks sex, but it probably confounds sex and gender in the census. Um, for example, in the IDs from Costa Rica, very recently they removed that category. So our IDs have our names, our date of birth, but they do not have um, a category for uh, male, female, or like they do in New Zealand for other, for example. So as you can imagine, all these decisions entail discussion about what are the, um, how do we define this characteristic, what are the possible subdivisions of this characteristic, and decisions have real repercussions in people's lives. So someone has a database somewhere with the information in your ID, and they decided that that information is what describes you. And those are the kinds of decisions that you might have to make if you build a database or a knowledge base to collect information. An interesting case is the word indigenous, for example. We use it in contraposition, for example, to, to people from colonial settler societies, to people who are Latin Americans or people uh, who are white in the States, for example. But indigenous is a category that covers many subdivisions. Indigenous people are as diverse as any other people on earth. If, if when you have the time after the break, please read this book called Indigenous Statistics. Um, it's incredible in how it divide and how it explains the consequences of dividing the world into, for example, indigenous versus not indigenous and how this mixes the data in strange ways that makes it very difficult to analyze and to understand the individual problems of this community. And again, when you have in your database some category of like ethnicity, for example, there's certain subdivisions of it. Which one, uh, which are the boxes that are going to be available and how are people going to decide which box should they fit in? Any classification system in the world would have this problem. Binary, ternary, ennery. If you divide the world into categories, you're always going to face these kinds of issues. Our databases and knowledge bases are ultimately a model of how we understand the world and how we understand descriptions of the world. And these models are essentially an ontology where we describe what are the categories that we're going to use to uh, describe the parts of the world. Any classification system is going to have an impact on how we access data and how, what kind of information we can derive from it. And this is difficult, expensive, political. And so creating these databases takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, which is why in the next couple of videos, we're going to try to get the computer's help to extract this information for us, where it has um, it's always going to need some sort of human creation to make sure that we detect biases, for example. But we need to, the help of the computer to get as much information as we can so we can get to, for example, 70 billion facts about the world.